Welcome today we have Dr. Lisa Thompson with us today and we are gonna talk about something that is so exciting and so close to the heart of Starship Goddess because we are gonna talk about Acturian and then we will see where else Spirit guides us to. So welcome Lisa. Thank you so much for having me here. Very excited to have the conversation. Me too. So I understand that you are an actor in Starseed and I would love to know, like, can you share with us how do you first realize that you are actor in Starseed and how do you start working with them? Yeah, um, so I've had, um, I've had an interesting life experience <laughs> throughout my entire life. So I've actually um, been an experiencer contactee throughout my childhood and my adulthood. And so I've more than just Arcturians, I've, I work with a lot of different groups, but I will share that Arcturian story because that's who wanted to channel through me first. But my first conscious memory of actually being taken onto a craft was when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And that group was not a group that's known to earth. Um, there are very few earth people that interact with this group. They're not part of any of the galactic federations or anything like that. But I did find out a couple of years ago that they work with the Arcturians. And so that that bridges that connection. So I first met my Arcturians in October of 2018. I was taking a psychic intuition class. And on the first night of class, our teacher led us through a meditative journey to meet a spirit guide that would help us get extra information if we needed it. Now, I one of my modalities is past parallel life regression therapy, and I've you know done a lot of spirit guide journeys myself and led others through it. So I you know I knew some of my humans, my animals, but this time completely different experience. I went to a different realm, and in front of me were the most beautiful group of blue skinned beings. They had you know larger heads, bald, skinny bodies. And they just exuded the most pure love I have ever felt, and more so than anything here on earth. And their message to me was, you are one of us, we are one of you, we are family. And then we were to ask them if they had a name that they wanted to be called. And so even though there was a group of them, there was one that was more to the front that was the spokesperson. And even though they are a collective, you know, they didn't, they didn't. The name wasn't Arcturian. It was actually the, the collective name of Uluru. And so um, then they gave me a gift of a crystal, a quartz crystal. And I didn't know what the purpose of that gift was until later on. But I come out of this journey not knowing who this group of beings is. I just know that they wanted me to call them Uluru. And I'm going around everyone's going around class sharing who their spirit guides are. Everyone's got normal humans <laughs> and <laughs> here I'm talking about the blue skinned beings. And there, there was a lady in class. Um, I love synchronicity, but there was a lady in class who knew some of the different ET races and what they look like. And so based on my description, she's like, it sounds like either the blue avians or the Arcturians. So I had to go home and Google what those were. Cause even though I had had ET experiences my whole life I hadn't gone down that rabbit hole of the races yet and so I when I googled what the what they look like when I saw what the Arcturians the how they're depicted it's exactly what I saw in this journey so I knew so that validated it for me that that was real and so then over the last several years I've developed that connection with them stronger and now what I fully understand is that that one that was to the front that was the spokesperson is actually me as my Arcturian self. So I was essentially looking at myself. And so when I'm channeling them now, because the channeling, it didn't start until 20, 2022. Um, but what I realized was like, okay, there's nothing scary about this. I am just simply channeling another aspect of myself. And then that actually opened the door where beginning of 2023, they were like, okay, now it's time to bring in some of your other groups um, that you are. And so they had me write down 12 additional names 
And so over a period of several months, I brought forth messages from 13 total different galactic races. Mm -hmm. And I know there's going to be more and more coming um, and deeper with each group, but you know, it's, I never thought that I would be channeling. Um, I did grow up in a spiritual school of enlightenment that was taught by a channel descended master. Mm -hmm. So channeling through the eighties and nineties was part of my life experience, but I, at that time, I, even though I love the messages, it was still weird and I wanted yeah. to fit in and be normal. And I had normal mainstream careers. So it really, it took until I moved here to Hawaii three and a half years ago for me to fully step into who and what I am. So that's just a little bit of my journey. <laughs> Beautiful story. And I love how you were sharing about how after you moved to Hawaii, it helped you to kind of anchor that energy. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah and and so I'm curious to know, because for those of you who are watching the video, if you are listening to the audio, you can go and find the video later. That is the background in you that a close depiction of the actuarian you, that you saw or is something else? The blue balloon, yeah. is that the balloon? So it's an inflatable and mm -hmm. it's, um, it does like that. I've named that one Uluru and okay. that one comes out on my UFO tours that I do. I do a night sky watch UFO tour here on the big island of Hawaii. And so, you know, as part of what I do in teaching play is definitely part of it as well. And I know that's part of your mission Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we always do a little photo shoot with the blow up BTs, um, you know, with the fun glasses before then we get into some of the real nitty gritty information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. Because I thought that, yeah, that sounded like what you were describing when you were sharing your story earlier, right? And yes. when you were saying that you were channeling the Arcturian and you were realizing that the front part is actually an expect of you would you say that at that moment you have tapped into your parallel reality or is it something else yeah I I fully understand that it I was seeing my parallel reality and you know as um, you and I have previously discussed on my podcast we you know, there really is no past, there is no future, all things are existing simultaneously. So all of these um, lives are parallel, and we all have the ability to access those and tap in. And so that's what I was getting to experience. And what I got to understand later on was that quartz crystal that was given to me was um, for me to have something here on earth that represents what my job is in, in that Arcturian realm, which is a healing. I am a healer mm -hmm. there, but Arcturians are higher dimensional beings. So they don't get sick. They don't have disease. But what I know is that I channel that energy, the healing energy from the Arcturian realm down here to me as earth Lisa. And then that helps send out this energy, not only to mother Gaia to help, um, you know, balance her energy and help raise that vibration, but to anyone that comes into contact with me, whether direct clients or not. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I it's have- you're a, a conduit for it. Yeah, exactly. And so what I have, um, I got as a representation to receive that energy even stronger was I got my Lemurian crystal here that, you know, I use to really anchor that energy from those higher realms down here to really propagate out. Mm, I love that. And so you were sharing that there are other ET races as well. So can you share just more of the common ones that you, you probably work with all of them, but we don't have to go through all 13 and yeah. all, but maybe just share a bit of the common one that you work with beside at your end? Yeah, I would love to. Well, and, um, so when I do the healing work that I do, um, so I have a modality that I have created that is called galactic ascension channeling. And it is a form of regression and energy healing, light language, sound healing, and other juicy stuff. But 
what I'm bringing in is the Arcturian energy of emotional healing. Mm. I also bring in Syrian energy of physical healing. So one of the lives that I fully got to experience in one of my regression sessions for me was um, a life as a Syrian during the time of the building of the pyramids, like super pre-Diluvian time, not our traditional Egyptology <laughs> story, but I was a genetic engineer in that mm. life. And I, one of the things that I know is that I have been a scientist, a genetic engineer, kind of a biodiversity expert in so many different realms. And so the Syrians are one, and I have different aspects of the Syrian energy. I've got the genetic engineer. I've got, I got the mer people, the cetaceans, the whales and dolphins, all of that kind of Syrian energy that comes through. And then the other part of my specific healing modality, um, I bring in the mantis energy. And I know some people are like, oh, the mantis, they're, you know, kind of scary looking or they might have some different ideas about them, but they are master healers, master geneticists. Mm -hmm. And I love their energy. Like, it's just, it's incredible. So those are at least for that healing modality that I do, the three primary ones that their energy comes through me. But then, you know, I do live here in Hawaii and I do have Pleiadian connection like you do. Mm -hmm. um, I also very much have the Lyran energy, the cats and, um, and so many others, yeah. but those, those would be, oh, and though I am very proudly part of the Zeta hybrid program. I have 12 hybrid children as part of this program, in addition to my two earth human babies, but <laughs> I- Tell me more about it. What is this hybrid program? Okay, so the Zeta Reticuli are a very specific um, group of gray ETs. There are mm -hmm. all different kinds of gray ETs, so a lot of people just lump them in one category, but they come from all different star systems. So the Zetas, their particular thing was that back a long time ago, even though there is no past, so in some parallel reality, they had bred out all of their emotions. They thought logic was the be all end all. So they slowly bred out the emotions, but what started happening, their brains started getting bigger. They couldn't give live birth because mm. their bodies, and they also became sterile. So they had to start cloning themselves to reproduce. Now they were actually dying as a race. And so what they they realized their mistake. And so they decided to make an agreement and they chose earth humans as part of this because we are such a mixing pot, a melting pot of ET races within our human DNA. Yeah. And so we have a beautiful diversity. And so what, and we have emotions now, you know, kind of extreme emotions, but so there are some of us earth humans that have a soul level agreement to be part of this Zeta human hybrid program. And so, you know, we have willingly said, okay, take my eggs, take my sperm. Mm. But what they're doing is they are taking the best parts of the Zeta DNA, the best parts of the human DNA and creating a spiritually advanced race of these hybrid beings that they can reincarnate into, we can reincarnate into, and that hopefully one day we'll be able to live here on earth among us in a peaceful way. So not all humans are part of it. No, no. But anyone who has experienced that kind of thing, and, and there's a lot of fear fe around it. People, yeah. they feel violated if they um, don't understand that they signed mm -hmm. up for it at a soul level agreement. But I have a life as a Zeta, and I know I would have said, yes, I'll volunteer to come human and be part of this program. Sign me up. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And no, so that's one that thing. That's clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing that I'm really here to do is to really change that fear-based narrative of our understanding of ETs and why yeah. they're here, what they're doing with us, because there's so much you know, negative stuff out there with the media, Hollywood, 
our government, governments around the world. I'm yeah. just about to say that, like, um, I was just watching a show the other day, and so they were just talking, like, so the alien were, like, the human were calling them alien, right? But then the alien is like, but you guys are alien to us. I mean, it makes sense, because, like, alien just means something foreign that you, you don't know, but just because you don't yeah. know, it doesn't make it bad. It's just because you don't know. So right. once you get to know it, like you say, you know, as you were here to mission to share more, especially, and I'm really grateful that you share all the information about the gray, because I know that the gray is one of the one that people tend to freak out the most. I Thank remember you. one of my students was sharing about like one of her experience, not with me when she was doing some work with some other people and she saw the gray and she just freak out. And I could imagine that it was scary because she didn't know what she did back then. And I'm glad you clarified that not everyone. Okay, so not every human necessary is part of the hybrid, but if they were, it is on a soul agreement level. Yeah. Right. So that yes. really clears up that part of where it felt because a lot of the story, even when I heard, even among spiritual people, it sounded to me that they are here just to take. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it is with consensus. It, it felt like they are here to invade us, quote unquote, right? And then take something out of us and then, you know, do something about it. Yeah. Well, that I would love to speak to that because, yeah. you know, when we when we come to earth, we go through the tunnel of forgetfulness, right? Yeah. The majority of people, probably 99% of the population is born not remembering where they come from, who they really are, you know, that we are all connected. We're all part of source. And so then you have society conditioning, familial conditioning, where there's all this fear instilled and not understanding, you know, what we are here to do. And so one of the, why I love some of the work that I do with the regressions is that when we get someone to the deep part of their subconscious mind, where all the information is stored, then they can see, oh, okay, now I understand I did sign up for this. Nothing is done to us against our free will, nothing. So even if we have negative experiences, we signed up for that. Mm -hmm. because we came here to learn, grow, and evolve. And that's fully my understanding. And I, I've had some really, really tough experiences in this life. And I know that I signed up for it all. And I'm actually in a place in my spiritual journey where I can thank those who were the most challenging for playing their roles so well of what they came here to do. And I know that they're, you know, like my first ex-husband, He's part of my soul family, but he was a tyrant, toxic, abusive husband. Mm -hmm. But now I can thank him and we can have normal conversations 18 years later. And so when we understand things from that higher level and have that different perspective, then there's no more fear because yeah. we know we have full control over our life. Love that. So... Do you find yourself, but can you share, so I understand that you work with a few of them, but then you started with the actor. And so let's start with that. So what are like some of like the common traits of the Arcturian, including their gifts? I know you briefly mentioned, but maybe you can elaborate a bit more of that. And I'm curious to know, to see how that is reflected in your human life, if any. Okay, well, so... One of the things that um, when they they started coming through me, so all of these beings are multidimensional mm -hmm. and they can reside in different frequencies. And so the Arcturians that I work with are, I don't even know what density they are in. They're non-physical, but they are very high vibrational. And so when they started channeling through me, and their message over the last, you know, two plus years is pretty consistent in terms of what they want humanity to know. Mm -hmm. Because all of these beings that are coming through me, they really want 
humans to understand who they are and what their perspective is from a higher reality. And so with the Arcturians, it's really um, timelines. They want everyone to know that we get to choose what timeline we are a part of. All timelines are existing simultaneously. And so as we're going through what seems like a very dark night of the soul of Mother Gaia with, you know, wars and, Mm -hmm. you know, just arguing on all sides worldwide, so much chaos going on, but that does not have to be the reality that someone experiences because what they, what they say is, you know, put your focus and your energy and your emotions into what you want to create in your life. Stop watching the news. Don't watch the media. Don't stay out of the polarization going on because that just creates more polarization in your own life. But when you can come from a state of joy, no matter what your situation, you can find joy in your life, gratitude. So coming from that place, following your passions, people get stuck in mundane reality, right? Mundane jobs. You had a normal job. I had normal jobs. Well, you know, for a while, animals were my passion and that's what my PhD is in. Then, you know, design was my passion. Now, this galactic connection is my passion. So following passions, very important. And staying in a state of play, like realizing Mm -hmm. that, you know, Okay, some people say you only have this one life. Well, no, you've got multiple <laughs> lives and you're you are infinite <laughs> in terms, you know, your energy does not die, your soul doesn't die. But, you know, live life to its fullest. That's what we're here to do. We're here to remember who we are, to really step into living here as earth humans and experiencing this beautiful planet that we all chose to incarnate on. And so the more that one creates this environment, first internal environment, heal the traumas, heal the judgments of yourself, get over any shame, guilt, anything going on like that, really clear out fears, the shadows, because all of those judgments and fears get projected onto other people. And so the more that we can clear ourselves, then we are able to then come from a true place of love for ourselves. And then that love emanates out into our communities and into the entire world. And that is what shifts the reality more to that fifth dimensional, harmonious community, empathic kind of reality Mm -hmm. that some of us are shifting to some people are not shifting there and that's fine there's no right or wrong timing on this but you know some people say okay the timelines are splitting and they are and so it's what you focus on and really stay in the energy of that's going to be your reality and it may be different than your next door neighbor yeah it's amazing how when you encounter the Arcturian and then you have been embodying this message and it was actually being reflected in your life, like how you learn from this you know, abusive relationship with your first husband and then you get to learn how to alchemize those traumas into your gifts and teach it to people. Yes. And then working with timeline, which is one of the main Arcturian gift, let's say, And that's why you are also working with past life, parallel life regression, which is essentially kind of working with timeline in that sense. So it's beautiful to see how when one can awaken to their starseed origin, like you don't necessarily need to know the specific origin, but just by awakening to your starseed self and remembering your gifts in that way, it starts to reflect into your daily life and your work and really enhances and deepen your journey in that way so it's it beautiful has. to see how it spans up for you well and, and i me, love oh, can the I, act- yeah yeah go ahead i just want to say one thing of like follow i i never thought i would live in hawaii but mm-hmm. you know there a thought came in and i was like oh 
I'd moved to Hawaii and my husband at the time, um, he passed away last year, but he was like, I'd moved to Hawaii and we look at each other and we're like, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm going to move to Hawaii. And so, but just taking that leap of faith of mm. not, you know, we didn't know anyone here, but we're again, just following what the next step that was presented, the next passion and what that did for me was really allow me to let go of the masks, let go of pretending to be normal. And, <laughs> and so I could be my full authentic self and really step into my gifts and let those come through me where I had hid myself most of my life because I did want to be normal and fit in. But, you know, now no, no more. I'm here to just really be who I am. <laughs> and, and, and the more that I live it, because I am living what they're teaching me. Now I'm human. So of course, you know, mm -hmm. there's it's a practice, not a perfection. But what it has allowed me to do is really where I used to judge things, I used to be very polarized in terms of how I would see the world. Um, now that I'm seeing it from the higher perspective, it allows me to stay back and not get involved. And my life is so much happier, so much joy because of that. And I, I can allow people to have their own experiences. I'm not here to force and make something just like me because we're all here on different journeys. That is essentially, you know, every higher being they share similar message but just in different angle different ways so that you resonate a little bit different so from what i'm hearing it sounded to me is like a returning to oneness and returning to love which is for me the palladian message that i've been sharing which is very consistent as well i mean there is like some themes from time to time that is specific but the big message is you know coming that to re oneness and love which is also shifting into the highest timeline of love and light and speaking of timeline can you share a little bit more what it means when you are saying that timeline splitting because some people might be relatively new to the concept of timeline like what do you mean by timeline and what is this splitting and shifting and how it relates to parallel reality just a little bit more on that and yeah. how your regression help people you through that, you know? Okay. So the way that I, I like to explain timelines. So all timelines are existing simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So imagine timelines being stacked on top of each other, like papers. And so we are continually timeline shifting all day long, just by making choices. Mm -hmm. And every choice we make puts us on perhaps a slightly different timeline now we may not experience a major shift because that choice might be very little in terms of the what we experience as our past reality is still the same but when you learn to play in the quantum realm with these timelines you can make huge timeline shifts where your entire past has fully changed from what it was in that other timeline but because it is a part of who you are, you don't remember that the past has changed. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's just a part of you. And so I myself have gone through some massive timeline shifts, like quantum timeline mm -hmm. shifts. Where I'm like, oh, and I, I was aware because I, I am trying to be as conscious as I can and what's going on. Um, but in terms of the regression work that I do, so when we tap in, um, and let's say, you know, the way that I work with people is that they come to me when they want to clear blockages or limitations, um, perhaps stuck trauma, but they also come to me to access their talents, gifts, and abilities, because all of that exists in mm -hmm. this quantum realm. And so when we, let's say we're clearing a blockage, then there might be a particular life that represents that trauma, the root cause of whatever that blockage is. When that comes up, they get to make a choice of changing the story altogether, rewriting it. They can also just choose to 
understand it from the higher perspective, keep it the same, but they're understanding it so it no longer affects them. But when they come out of that, then their brain actually starts to rewire to that new reality. And so it's it's a beautiful gift that we can give ourselves. And, and you can work with someone like me. You can also learn to really get in deep yourself to experience this. Um, I love working with people, like in terms of, I like having other people regress me, just like mm-hmm. I love regressing other people because sometimes when we're doing it to ourselves, we're in our head instead of like really deep, you know, into the higher self, the subconscious mind. But we all have the answers inside of us. We all have the ability to heal these traumas, to heal these blockages. We just have to know how to access it. And there are different modalities that can do this. Um, And so this is just one of the methods that I use. Yes, it's definitely very important. Like, whatever you had just shared that we can it basically teaches us that we have the power and it really lies in the moment to moment decision because every one change equal total shift there is something that a lot of people don't really understand is because they think that it has to be like this massive change I mean yeah massive change might be more visible to your physical eyes and you understand it more logically but every single change like if you ever change the recipe of what you're cooking you know that right like just change by one tablespoon entire taste change it's the same thing one single change changes everything and that's the beauty of working with timeline because you can constantly make new choice and changes right. the past the present and the future at the same time beautiful yeah, work I, what i realized yeah. is i didn't or the earth split though that you mm-hmm. you had asked about so mm-hmm. so then if we're applying that same stacked principle of all timelines yep. existing simultaneously well so earth has multiple timelines as well and the reality and so you know it's not like two choices there are multiple yep. choices and so really it is like where is your mind? Where are your emotions? What are you putting your attention to? So it is creating your reality, whether you're conscious of it or not. And so for me, I choose to be as conscious about what I am choosing to be part of my reality so that I can consciously keep moving towards that state of fifth dimensional, fifth Mm -hmm. fifth frequency reality more and more. And All of us throughout our day, we're shifting between the third, fourth, fifth, like up and down. Some of us are able to hold that fifth more when we're in that place of love and, you know, compassion and all of that. Others are really stuck in the third where they're like very dense and Mm -hmm. focused on the fear and the negativity. But it's, it is all a choice for us. We have complete free will and we can, we do create our reality. Totally. And I would love to kind of circle back to the beginning where you touch on Galactic Federation. Can you share a little bit more? What does that mean? So, and I don't work with any of the Galactic Federations. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, of my, one of my psychic medium friends, when he was pulling in a couple of things for me, he's like, you're being, they're inviting you to work with them. And I'm like, hmm. I, I'm not called to that. Mm-hmm. There are people mm-hmm. that are called to that. And I think, so kind of like Star Trek for anyone who mm-hmm. has ever watched Star Trek, you know, there there's this idea of different ET races out there coming together for a common mission. Mm-hmm. And so now the galactic federations, they can be called different things. And, you know, I don't know what the correct one is. I think there are multiple federations out there. But some of these groups are actually watching over Earth because, number one, some of these ET groups, they're our family. We have up to 22 different ET races in our DNA. And so some of them are watching over us kind of as parents, but they can't go against our free will. 
Um, some of them are just, you know, we're a very interesting species here on planet Earth because of our mixture. And so it's kind of like watching an Earth experiment or a TV show. Mm -hmm. um, but also everything that we do here on Earth has a direct ripple effect out into our solar system, into the galaxy, into the universe, through dimensions. And so some of these federations, what they are doing is making sure that we do not destroy ourselves or destroy earth because we have you know done that in the past mm -hmm. and we it is time where we are in this really beautiful shift into the great awakening and so really there are a lot of reasons why they're kind of watching over but it is a conglomeration of different et races working together for the greater good of the universe. Is there a more popular, well, popular isn't the right word, uh, more well-known races that are in Galactic Federation that you know of? Well, I mean, from what I understand, the ones that we've talked about, so the Pleiadians, mm -hmm. the Arcturians, um, the Zetas might even be a part of that, the Lyrans the Orions, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, so the Syrians. So Got it. I think some yeah. people call it Galactic Council. So I think it's kind of just maybe a bit different name it's, to different people. Yeah, different names. And there are some different councils out there. You know, there yeah. are specific race councils like the Orion Council or, or mm -hmm. the Arcturian Councils. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, we, we like to label things as humans. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so one of the things that um, even though I had first met the Arcturians and I really, their energy, I, I mean, I just love being part of the Arcturian world, mm -hmm. but they made it very clear of like, you are more than just Arcturian. Like, you know, we like to feel like we belong to something. And so, oh, I'm an Arcturian starseed. I'm a Pleiadian starseed. Well, that just tribalizes us. Mm -hmm. We are everything, right? We are all connected to each other. And so that's one thing they, they really wanted me to actually share with my clients who are, well, what kind am I? Well, you're, you're a lot of them, which mm -hmm. one do you resonate with right now? Most closely, right? Yeah. That's also what I always tell my students. Like, if you don't know where you come from, it's fine. And yeah. also, you know, Starseed is not a label. I also always say that, which is, I'm glad that you actually mentioned that as well. Can you also kind of elaborate a little bit more on the DNA part where you were sharing, like, we have like 22 kind of re different races in our DNA, because that might be like a new concept for people. So for my understanding is basically everything that, the scientists call junk DNA is those DNA, but just kind of explain it so people know the implication of it, like what it means and why we need to activate, or do we even need to activate it, you know? Okay, so I love this because we have had different ET visitors visiting Earth throughout Earth's history. Um, I have got been able to see a lot of how animals were seeded here. And I was actually part of that in one of my parallel lives. I was the energy that was watching over earth. And it was my job to tell them, okay, it's time to bring the animals here and the, the seeds of these animals. And so also with our human evolution. So I have a PhD in evolutionary biology. And what I can tell you is what we learned in mainstream evolutionary biology and what I had to teach. So not what I understand now. Mm -hmm. And so I had to basically throw that all away. But we have a concept in evolutionary biology um, known as missing links. And this is true with animals as well as humans, where you will have an almost overnight change in anatomy and physiology from one species to another without mm -hmm. a transitional species showing why or like how that species all of a sudden appeared. Like well, how so, we suddenly become homo sapiens? Is that what you meant? Yeah, exactly. So we have different places in our homo history mm -hmm. of different homo groups where all like really overnight, there was a huge shift yep. in terms of the anatomy and physiology. 
And so we have several places where we have these missing links in our human evolution. And so it's my understanding that that is actually where some of these different ET groups came. They spliced in their DNA, they modified our DNA. And so then ultimately we get what we are as homo sapiens and we are even evolving into something beyond that. Now, what's interesting, you brought up the junk DNA because yeah, the majority of our DNA, scientists have no clue what it does, but it is my understanding as well that yes, that is our latent ET DNA. Now, the other thing is when they sequenced the human genome, they found places where the DNA was like kinked and spliced, where it looked like a genetically modified animal or plant. And so there is a lot of evidence out there that supports this idea that these different groups came and upgraded our body. That's what mm -hmm. they were doing, changing, modifying, upgrading. And the life that I got to see as my Syrian self, where I was a genetic engineer. So again, it was super ancient Egypt. It wasn't even Egypt then, but it was like during the building of the pyramids. And I was not one of the ones on the ground. I was up in the spaceship. My job with my counterparts, we were sending down sound frequency energy from the spacecraft to upgrade the human DNA, to modify it so that these humans could run more energy. Because as we are evolving and shifting to that fifth dimensional vibration, we have to be able to run more energy through our bodies. We have to expand our consciousness. So that's what we were doing. Now, there were other Syrians of us with boots on the ground that were teaching those humans that we were upgrading things like medicine, agriculture, mm -hmm. astronomy, but they were also then teaching them how to do the sound thought levitation of these megalithic stones to put them into place, to build these massive temples and these massive pyramids and all of that. And so now what's interesting is that those we had we had a test group going on where on earth we were directly teaching the humans this technology now we had another planet where we were there upgrading the body but we were leaving them alone we weren't teaching them they didn't know what was going on and here on earth it ended up not being a good experiment that mm -hmm. that ended up creating technology um, like the Atlantean kind of technology that destroyed that civilization. And we're on the other planet where we left them alone. Their spirituality grew and grew. They were harmonious with their planet. And they were complete and beautiful, like harmony, compassion, and love with each other and with their planet. So wow. that was a very interesting thing to witness. So that's just a little bit of, yeah, this... ET DNA and your question of is there anything that we have to do to activate it well the more that we are ourselves in a higher vibration of reality our DNA is naturally getting activated the more that we know that we are more than just you know here to be human and work the nine to five job and all of that that we are doing the spiritual healing peeling away the layers of the trauma the blockages, then that really opens up all of our clear abilities and our telepathy, our ability mm -hmm. to biolocate, you know, all of that, which is a natural part of what we have inside of our DNA. Yeah, as you said, as you said, it's all happening simultaneously right here, right now, and it's up to us to see it or not. Right. So that's where the consciousness come in. The more we are conscious, the more that we can assess those information and the wisdom that lies within our DNA, whether it is our gifts or anything like that. What a beautiful yeah. sharing of wisdom and conversation. And I really love how you bring in your personal sharing from all your regression. It's so beautiful to know that you know like hear all these stories that like oh this is what they do and things like that and i'm pretty sure this really open up the eyes of a lot of our listeners and confirm some stuff that they might have been questioning and answering their question so really appreciate you being here and just before we start to kind of wrap up i just want to 
invite you to share probably like is there anything else you want to add or share in addition to what we already discussed and maybe share a little bit more on where people can find you and your work as well okay yeah um again you know wherever you are across the world we all came to have our own personal soul journeys and we often want to judge what other people think, what they do. Oh, you know, that's that's not right because that's not what I believe or what I think. But the way that um, the, the Arcturians gave me this image of a disco ball. And each one of us is one of those tiny little fragment mirrors on the disco ball. And we are all part of that disco ball. But when the light is shining to hit the mirror, it's reflecting off. And we then feel like we're separate from this disco mm -hmm. ball. And, and those of us who are closer on the disco ball together, we might have a similar perspective because we're looking out the same kind of window. Those on the opposite side of the disco ball have a completely different reality. And all of it is correct. So the more that we can understand that we are not these fractals. We are all one. We are all connected and there is no right or wrong. In these higher dimensional realities, there is no right or wrong. There's no more polarization, no more judgment. So the more that we can really understand that and get over the judgment, again, of ourselves, but then of other people and what they're doing, then we really are shifting to that fifth dimensional vibration of reality. And we can then truly love others because we love ourselves deeply. And love is the universal law, the universal language. And so that's that's always what all of the groups share through me. Yeah. And, and where can people find more about your work? So my website is um, two different ways to get there. Dr. Lisa J. Thompson.com or mysticmanta.com. And then I also have big island UFO tours.com. I have my YouTube channel, which is Connection to the Cosmos with Dr. Lisa Thompson. And then I'm on Facebook and Instagram as Dr. Lisa Thompson. Beautiful. I'm going to put all those in the show notes so all of you can go and check out all the beautiful stuff that Lisa does and continue to, you know, bust in all her wisdom and sharing. Thank you so much, Lisa, for being here. Thank it's you. such an honor for us to have you. It's been an honor to be with you. Thank you. All right. See you.